this book is loaded with so much knowledge. I know I keep saying that, but every chapter of this book could almost be its own book. There's so much crammed into this whole book. It's awesome. And Good morning, modern steaders. First off, I need to apologize and say I'm sorry. Please forgive me. The book we're going to be talking about, I got the great privilege to get like a pre-pre-released copy of this book. So I'm going to be sharing with you some great information today, but you can't go and order it yet. Well, you can go and order it, but it doesn't ship out to April 1st. But my recommendation is, there's going to be a link in the description down below to Amazon. Go click on the link, buy the book, and then come back and listen to the review. Now, the book we're going to be talking about today is The Homesteader's Herbal Companion. This is an awesome book written by Amy Fuel. Let me just tell you one more thing real quick. This is a pre-pre-pre-copy and it's comb bound. The real book is going to be hard covered. So you won't be getting a comb bound copy when you order that. I just wanted to let you know. But this is a great book by Amy Fuel. If you don't know who Amy is, you need to check out her blog. She's got an awesome blog. She's a mother. She's a photographer. She's the one who's putting on the Homesteader of America's conference, which is a great conference. Amy's a great person. But let's dive into the book right away. Let me show you this book here. It's a beautifully written book with some amazing photographs in here that Amy has taken. But it's your ultimate guide to growing, raising, and preserving your own herbs and then how to use them. I'm going to just show you a few things and highlight a few things that I really like about this book. First off, Joel Salatin wrote the foreword to this book. Right there, hands down, Joel Salatin signed off on this book. He thinks it's amazing. But let's dive into it and we'll go a little bit deeper. Then we get into the introduction of the book. and Amy gives you some of her backstory and tells you why she loves using the herbs. And it's just great. It kind of puts it more into perspective that this is a person who's using it. This is why she uses them. And this is why she's grown to love them. So it puts it more into like the first person context for you, like this isn't just a doctor or somebody talking to me saying, hey, you need to do this. This is no real life experience here, which is awesome. And it makes me feel more relaxed knowing that this book is written by a person that uses this for her and her family, for their health, their freedom, their wealth. I mean, without your health, you don't have anything. So the introduction shares some of that. Then in the next chapter of the book, she gets into the basic of herbalism. She breaks down definition, what an herb is, and just kind of really explains it to you, opens your eyes up, makes you feel like you can do this, and hey, this is for everybody. You, This isn't just like an elitist thing. We can all learn how to grow our own herbs, use them for medicinal purposes, for cooking, and we can take back our health. It's just great. I really enjoy, I enjoy the whole book. One of my favorite chapters of the book is the Homesteaders Herbless. Let me show you why. The name of the chapter is kind of misleading. It's the Homesteaders Herbless. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, it's a list of herbs. But no, what's amazing about it, she goes in and tells you, you know, don't be overwhelmed. There's a whole bunch of herbs out there. Pick your top five. Pick why you want to grow herbs, whether it's for cooking and culinary use or if it's medicinal use. But don't get overwhelmed. Play and have fun. But the part that I really enjoy about the chapter, let's pick, we'll pick Calendula. She goes into the scientific name, what family it's in, the common name. So most people are going to know Calendula as a marigold. Everybody has marigolds in their garden, but you know what? Most of us wouldn't realize that this is a flower. It's a beautiful thing. It helps keep skunks out of the garden, but it also has some great medicinal use. This is the part that I really love about the book. For every herb, Amy lists the use of them. So for the marigold, we have anti-inflammatory, stimulates wound healing, and gastrointestinal use. And then they, she tells you how to harvest it, harvest flowers, heads at maturity, dry out before using. Awesome. She explains the history of every herb she's talking about. She goes on to say how she uses it. This isn't just, hey, this is how you can use it. No, this is like first person. She's sharing her experiences with us. 
I think I put Clenger in just about every salve I make. I'm kidding, kind of, but it truly has incredible benefits for the skin in your body. We have seen major skin irritations, bee stings, and other ouchies healed by Clenger salve. It can also be safely used on livestock. Calendula is in my pantry 24-7. Then Amy goes on, she talks about usage and doses. And that's one of the great things I didn't touch on earlier in the book, but I just wanted to share a little bit of it with you. In the first chapter, she talks about herbalism safety, which is great. She makes you feel comfortable with the herbs, but gives you a warning. Don't use too much. I can't give it all away. But it's just great because she goes through and she explains everything throughout the whole book. So she has all sorts of herbs. I'm not gonna go through every one of them here for you, but I'll flip through a few of them for you. We got lemon balm, marshmallow, onion, oregano, Oregon, grapefruit, parsley, peppermint. I mean, she just shares a lot of the common herbs for you. Right here, look, sage. And then she talks about how all homesteaders love sage because it's one of our most popular Herbs we're gonna put into sausage, and who doesn't like sausage? We'll skip to the next chapter. She talks about growing your own herbs, about preparing your soil. Amy has a chapter in the book on growing your own herbs and preparing your soil. In the preparing the soil part, it's an awesome section for preparing soil. I mean, you're gonna use the steps that she teaches about preparing your soil, not just for herbs, you can use this for all of your gardening. But then she doesn't just go into that. She talks about different kinds of gardening and different kind of beds you can raise your herbs in, which is great. And it got me thinking, man, me and Gina both got this book. Actually, Olivia and Gina are in the house right now reading their copy. But it got me thinking, man, now I really have to build my window boxes to go on the outside of the outdoor kitchen. Because Gina's going to need a place to grow her herbs. So I got another project I got to knock off the old list now. Probably get a little bit of time before I gotta build that, but I know she'll be wanting her window boxes this year. The next chapter that I really enjoyed here is chapter four, wild herbs in your backyard. There are so many wonderful wild herbs that we can be using. And the best part about these wild herbs is, is you probably don't even realize you have them. A lot of these wild herbs she talks about, we all have them and we think of them as weeds. But there's so many beneficial properties to these weeds that we think of. And it's just amazing. There's a few of them that we, there's a few of them that we use personally on our homestead, and it's just amazing how well they work. Let me show you my favorite one. My favorite one is the first one she touches on in this chapter, which is plantain. Plantain is one of those herbs that grows everywhere, and it's just amazing that how many people don't know about its beneficial benefits of it. In the book she talks about the history of the plant and it's just amazing. I'm not going to share that. I guess I can share a little bit of that with you. The part that I really like is she was talking about how plantain grows everywhere. It's, it's one of those weeds that grow just about anywhere. In sidewalks crack, in your yard, along the roadside. Native Americans used to call it the white man's foot. And I had me thinking for a minute. I said I know where they're going with this because it's true because it seemed to have followed the pathways of the early settlers. And she gives you more description about it here, but plantain will grow anywhere, and for some reason, whether it's a gravel road, or if it's a beaten path, you always see plantain growing it. For some reason, plantain does great in a highly traveled area. But the reason we love plantain, and we started using plantain, is when we were looking into getting bees, when we lived in Massachusetts, my daughter Olivia was five years old at the time, and I knew she'd want to be involved, but I'm like, you know what, if we're getting bees, we've got to be responsible, and we're most likely going to get stung. What can and what can't we do? So we went to our herbalist doctor down there, and he said, oh, plantain. You can make a plantain salve, or you can chew it. And I was like, what? You can take plantain, you can make a salve with it, or if you don't have time to make a salve, you can go find a plantain leaf, chew it up, and you can put it on the bee sting or a bug bite and it takes away the pain. I know you're probably not going to believe me and that's what I first thought. So the first time I got stung by a bee, I chewed up a bite of plantain, put it on the bee sting and instantly the pain went away and I was like, no way. So I took the plantain off the bee sting and it started hurting again. Put it right back on and it went away. 
Ever since then, we've been a believer and the user of plantain. We actually made it into a sob, and I call it our bee sting sob, or our ouchie sob. Anytime Olivia gets stung by a bee, or a bug bite, mosquito bite, we put a little bit of that on there, and it takes it away. Works great. So there's a lot of practical use in this book. The best part about this chapter and the chapter on the herbs you're going to grow is going to be a resource. This is a book you're going to be finding yourself going back to. Anytime you have an issue, you're going to go, oh, this is going on. What plant was that again? And you're going to find yourself flipping through here or marking the pages. And you're just going to be going back and forth. This is going to become the homesteader's herbal resource. It's just amazing what information and knowledge this book is full of. Whether you're trying to just learn about this right away, if you've been doing this for a while, there's going to be something in this book for you. Now we get into chapter 5 and it's talking about seed saving, drying, and storing your herbs. And it just goes on and on. Letting us know how to save all of our herbs, how to dry them, what we need to do, all the different methods. There's a bunch of different methods. Which is going to work better for you? Which one you're going to want to use? how long they store for. Then she gets into teas and tincture making. And the great part is, is she has practical use tea recipes of how to make them. I know for us and our family, the way we use herbs most of the time is tinctures. If we're sick, we go into our medicine cabinet and we grab out our tinctures that we need to take. And in here, she just talks and describes and gives you a lot of knowledge about tinctures, why to use tinctures, why they're so powerful, what works, what doesn't work. There's a lot of knowledge in here. We've been using a lot of herbs for a long time, but we haven't dove deep into a lot of this stuff. And in here, there's a lot of new knowledge that we're going to be gaining and learning. It's going to be incredible. We have just upped our game on our herbalism on being able to have freedom from going to the doctors. If we're sick, we won't have to call somebody up. We'll be able to go, hey, what's that? We're gonna dive into our Homesteaders resource book and just flip through it and try it. It's gonna be awesome. Amy, thank you. This is such a huge help. And then the next chapter, she gets into syrups. Much like making your own cough syrup, like who wouldn't want to make their own cough syrup? Elderberry syrup, there's a great recipe in here for elderberry syrup. We make elderberry syrup every year. It works great for fighting off the cold, the flu. And she just dives really deep in this book on different syrups, different ways to make them. And it's just amazing. In this chapter, she also gives you a recipe for fire cider. And in here, she goes into talking about using apple cider vinegar. And fire cider is just amazing. It seems to be getting more and more popular again. And right here, you got a recipe how to make it. And in chapter 8, she talks about infused oils and salves and just how to make them and gives you quite a few awesome recipes. She's got a chapter 10, which is on homestead essential oils. Then she goes into things you need to know about essential oils, making your own blends using them for aromatherapy, using them internally. She just dives so deep into every topic. This is one after my own heart. I love cooking and cooking with all the beautiful food here on the homestead. And right here, chapter 11, she's got cooking with herbs on the homestead. In this chapter, she talks about pairing herbs with meats. Then she gets into the different herbs that she likes to use on her meats. And this is really awesome. She shares some herb spice mixes. We got some really cool ones here. We got herbs de province. I can't give away all the recipes she has in this book, but she's got a cool lemon lavender pound cake. That sounds delicious. We're gonna be making this one before you know it. Then in the last two chapters of the book, she has herbs for our four-legged friends. So she's got herbs that we can use for our livestock and how to use them. And then different recipes. We have herbs for chickens and other poultry. 
this book is loaded with so much knowledge. I know I keep saying that, but every chapter of this book could almost be its own book. There's so much crammed into this whole book. It's awesome. Amy, I need to thank you. This is a huge resource you've given to all of us homesteaders. Well, you don't even have to be a homesteader to enjoy and appreciate all this. We live in a great time right now. We have all this knowledge at our fingertips. And even if you can't grow the, your herbs yourself, we can go to the store, we can get on the interweb, and we can find and buy all of these herbs to use. We can go to the store and buy the tinctures. So there's no reason not to try this. If you're looking for something to learn, if you're looking for just one chapter out of this book or how to start a garden, this is a great book for any one of those resources and then it's a great place to dive deeper and learn more and more. I can't recommend this book enough. This is just an amazing book. If you're new to the channel, now is a great opportunity to subscribe to the channel and while you're down there, turn on notifications and that'll hopefully YouTube will let you know when we upload a video, go live or post something to our community tab. But the best thing to do is remember, we upload a video every day at 6 a.m. And go on over to our website, lumnaacres.com. I'll put a link here in the description down below. Sign up for our newsletter, and we'll keep you up to date on our crazy journey here at Lumna Acres. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.